Hello, investors. It is Connor Bates, Associate Portfolio Manager with Revere Asset Management. Today is Thursday, September 12th. Coming to you with tonight's Revere Roundup Daily Market Insight video. So market state, this is getting upgraded to an uptrend, um, strong past two days this week. And if we look at the trend gauge here, market leaders pulling them, putting them back into a bullish uptrend, um, just plain and simple, a lot of stocks falling through to the upside. And for the first time in a while, breakouts are working and falling through to the upside, which is good to see for growth, growth stocks, especially short term. We have the green arrow here. This is our 21 EMA, uh, mid and small cap still lagging there. Medium term, 50 day, the S&P and the Dow Jones pretty clearly above. The QQQ is right at it. And then again, uh, relative weakness in mid and small caps. And then long-term, this is our 200-day moving average green arrow stays. Um, so the, today basically was S&P falling through to the upside with leaders participating. So here are the final numbers. 21 over 21 list up 1.05%. 15 green, one flat, five down. Big 8 up 1.32%, RGA up 1.10%, S&P up 0.75%, RSP, that's the S&P 500 equal weight, up 0.62%, QQQ up 0.98%, equal weight up 0.47%, Dow Jones up 0.66%, mid caps uh, 0.86%, Russell 2000 1.29%, 6040, 0.4%, and then in house growth protection up 0.89% on the day. So, as usual, into the inter asset correlation. And first chart is the SP 500. And as you can see, we obviously had that very strong upside reversal yesterday off the 100 day and falling through to the upside today, clearly above the 50 and 21 day. And great action. You know, we had this. 5,400 double bottom, and now we're breaking through to the upside. And then obviously 5,600 is a resistance that we're going to be keying in on. And after this strong move up, you know, maybe a little tight digestion for a move higher, that's definitely an option. And one thing is you look at this weekly, and we talked about this in a couple of videos, but that 21 week moving average, it held again. And that's a clear, clear line in the sand for. For bull for a bull market slash bull trend, as long as it keeps respecting that and bouncing, the trend remains intact. And overall, this is good. Um, obviously, this panic low here, and then obviously forming a um, a higher low back above all the moving averages. So good to see for the index. RSP uh, breaking this down trend line and seeing some more participation. QQQ, very strong today. Day two, higher high, falling through to the upside, back above the 50 and the 21 day. And after quite some time of relative weakness, maybe we start to see the NASDAQ get into gear and lead. Um, a lot of the big tech names have quite some room to the upside if they want to explore those prices. And uh, a few of them are just right under high. So a lot of good looking charts for big tech as well. And then the weekly um, bounced right off that 40 week and getting back above the 21 week and the 10 week. So triple whammy there. And that's just great to see for the, for the bull trend. Dow Jones breaking this down trend line here and strong up closing the day at the highs. And you can notice on all these indexes, stochastics are getting that uh, bullish cross. Mid caps, relative weakness, but held that 200 day and coming into the 50 day. Russell 2000, right at that 50 and, and 21 day. Big picture, this still looks fine, but just a choppy mess. There's been a few trends, like this one was, you know, a couple, but it's all been within a range. So um, just pretty choppy for now, but maybe if this can finally get going, it could trend nicely, but it's still hanging in there, nothing wrong with it. The VIX, exactly what we want to see, back below 20 and continuing lower. So that should be good for volatility and helpful for swing and position trading. You get that smoother trend. 
The dollar uh, outside reversal against the 21 day can argue that's good for stocks. And you'll see that prompted a uh, night, really nice breakout in, in the metals today. Gold breaking out of this flat base. GDX wedge pop above this 21 uh, downtrend line, sorry. Silver even participating, relative strength line hooking back up, back above all these moving averages. So we saw a broad base move in commodities, gold, silver. Bitcoin uh, just kind of coming back into this 21 day, still in this big range, very choppy price action. Uh, bonds, just tight digestion day, TLT digestion day, maybe it's forming a handle right at this 100 level. Uh, 30 year might be trying to put in a UNR here up, off this, this low. And then same thing with the 10 year. Could say this is, you know, you know, potentially trying to undercut and reclaim that. So we'll see moving forward. All right, we'll get into the tail of the tape. Um, so basically on this, Sectors wise, like I mentioned, it was a lot of strength in precious metals and commodities, gold, silver, copper, oil, home builders were strong as well. Weakness, um, semiconductors were down on the day, but overall they're, they just saw a big bounce the other day. So some digestion and then tan was down, did have a big pop up um, as the market, you know, just based on the pres presidential debate. So we'll see. And then one thing to know, Good to start seeing two days above the eight, two days above the 21. The best trading environments occur when the indexes are moving to the upside above the eight and 21. So that's good to see. Um, and then, so a lot of action today in-house. We bought back NVIDIA, bought back Oracle. And when I go over those, Oracle got some good news after hours. That's in the stocks pop and I'll mention it. Uh, bought Nail and Nugget and then added to Cobb and Upro. And then Friday Keys, obviously S&P versus that 5600 slash 5651, QQQ into that 475. And sometimes our best gauge um, besides the index is what are the leaders doing? And the leaders definitely were really strong today. And there was proliferation of setups and breakouts working. So um, let's get into the charts. So I'll start with uh, some of the trades in-house today. Um, so NVIDIA bought this one back, breaking above the 50-day and 21, nice volume as it held that 100 level. And if the market's gonna go higher, you think an expectation is NVIDIA is gonna, gonna lead as it's been all past year, two years. And then we added Oracle and. It's always a nice treat when your stock gaps up um, overnight. This one's up 6% over uh, in after hours trading. And the reason there is Oracle executives were speaking at a company conference and they said that they see at least 66 billion revenue in fiscal year 2026. And then they also see at least 104 billion revenue in fiscal year 2029. And then they also see 20% EPS growth in fiscal year 2029. So good to see. And the setup here was had that strong earnings gap, reclaim the high volume flows, and then just put in um, another high, higher high today. And obviously it's up into that 170 mark after hours. Added to Kava, this one continues to show relative strength, took out that high volume close from the earnings gap and then it closed near high a day and it was this was a you know this is how you like to see power earnings gaps act you know they have that initial strong gap on volume we had a little pullback and the volume was um larger than you'd like to see but that was also due to a news event started to you turn off that gap low and now it's starting to turn higher so we added there added to the s p with it getting back above some key levels, um, added back home builders via now. This is the ETF we use, but I'm going to show the, the underlying because the, the levered ETFs can just skew it sometimes. Breaking this down trend line back in through this uh, 120 spot and look at um, some of the home builders today. Toll, very similar look. 
KVH, again, a lot of these have a similar chart. And one thing that, you know, so I'm showing you individual home builder stocks that have similar charts, but if you do a relative strength um, time frame analysis, you'll see that now, which is the levered ETF, often outperforms all these stocks. And that's the reason we choose that. And obviously we don't have to worry about single stock risk. Like, you know, is Toll Brothers gonna outperform KBH? You know, that's really just a coin toss versus seeing the sector strength here and playing it via the ETF. And we bought NUGT, which is the gold miners. And you can see gold breaking out um, and GDX, just really strong downtrend line break. And gold has just been very strong, continues to uh, form new bases after moves up, had this big move up or another base, another move up. Now it's looking like it's trying to move higher out of this base. Um, so that was in-house today. Um, let's take a look at the 21 over 21 list. Axon, super strong here. Notice this one, another one that held that high volume close from the earnings gap, and then really just you turning strong up, up on the day, 6.3% on 68% above average volume. Affirm, good to see this one start to bounce back. It had that strong earnings gap and day two higher high, which got slammed with the market. But now this one held the 200 day, strong two days up. Kava, we added to this one, GEV. So they had some news this morning and it prompted a gap down here, but this bounced quickly off the open, retook the opening range and just trended up really strongly all day. So, um, you know, that's what you expect. In, in some leading stocks is dips to get bought. So this one continues to be very strong. Shark Ninja back above that 100 level and another just A plus uh, after earnings gap action. Gapped up, built a nice range, moving higher and continues to move higher out of these consolidations. C Limited, this is another one that's in this retail internet industry group, hanging in there pretty well. Closed near the low end of the day, but chart looks good. Service now, another in-house name, day two, higher high, looks great. GWRE, Guidewire software, continues to trend higher. Uh, Sprouts Farmers Markets, this one's setting up a really nice base here. So maybe this one breaks out, relative strength has been great. NTNX, this was another earnings gap, kind of undercut that low and reclaimed and Sometimes you see that a lot as well. Uh, they'll put in a day two higher high, then come back down and shake out those buyers and then reclaim that low and get off to the races. IOT, said that huge volatility yesterday, but shaking it off for now. NOC, these military stocks remain strong. Lockheed, another one, Palantir, continues to build off that S&P inclusion news. Um, ARGX just kind of pulling back to the 21. Flutter consolidating after this breakout. Race sitting right at the 21. CBOE consolidating above the 21. FTNT pulling back to the 21. Had some news intraday about a breach of data. And, and you can see that um, how the market reacted. And, you know, sometimes you do see these in these cybersecurity stocks because trust is so critical. Crowd's a good example that huge gap down. And so, you know, sometimes you get those type of moves in the sector. PNW is another one in the sector that's holding up pretty well. Held the 50 day, that 345 level was prior high of the base. So it's coming back around. That looks pretty good. And then I wanted to talk about some big tech stocks. Netflix, this is one of the best looking ones right under highs um, and starting to emerge through this downtrend line. So this one's clearly showing some relative strength and indicative that tech maybe wants to move higher. Meta's another one, broke this downtrend line really nicely today. Undercut reclaimed that 500 level. And I mentioned that 21 week uh, earlier with the S&P and stocks tend to respect this pretty well also. Meta on the pullback um, found support right at the rising 21 week and, and moving higher now. So good to see that. And then you got Microsoft, which has been a laggard 
relative strength. But like I mentioned, some evidence that tech might take the baton here. This one's clearing a big RS down trend line, and this is getting back above the 50 day. So maybe this is just um, a multi month base because these stocks have had some huge runs. So basing is normal. Um, Amazon building above the 200 day and seeing a strong push today. Google, this is the real laggard, but if this can get back above the 200 day in that 154 uh, prior low, maybe this one gets some momentum back to the upside. You have 50 day there, so maybe a higher low. But um, good to see, good to see these starting to claw back as they were getting sold pretty heavy. But um, now, given how some of them how oversold they are that could set the stage for tech to really have a lot of juice to the upside. Um, so got some other semiconductors, Avgo, um, just three really powerful days. And look at that volume back above all the moving averages. And I'll just pull up a chart of the socks. So yeah, this you know is building a higher low and uh, trying to build above the 200 day. So definitely still oversold and some work to do, but the leaders like Avgo, Nvidia, are doing well for the sector, um, for the sector right now. So, a couple other in-house names: Eli Lilly held the fifty-day very nicely. This was pretty orderly pullback, no damage, and now it's reclaiming the twenty-one. That's good. Race. I'll just mention this one. Yeah, sitting at the twenty-one. Um, and so, yeah, strong character change in the market. You know, it just from. This was one of the biggest, yesterday was one of the biggest intraday reversals the market seen since that uh, October low when the market gapped down and then reversed really hard. Um, so good to see and, and strong, strong positive day overall. So that's everything I got for you guys today. So that is going to wrap it. As I always like to hear from you, my email is Connor at Revere Asset. And you can always reach out to Dan or Don at revereasset.com. Phone is 855-REAL-WEALTH. That is 855-732-5932. And if you're interested in becoming a client, please reach out. And with that, I'll wrap it for Thursday, September 12th. This is Connor Bates with Revere Asset Management. Telling it like it is. Thanks for listening and have a good day.